Welcome to Ageless. This video will be the only antioxidant superfood versus glycemic index inflammation video that you'll ever need to watch. It'll help get you in the habit of shopping for and eating foods that make you look and feel amazing and avoiding foods that damage and age you. If you stay until the end, we will talk about what the studies are saying about the glycemic index and longevity. Before we get started, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional. Everything I say on this channel is from my own education and experience, and nothing should be substituted for medical advice. So antioxidants and superfoods, nature's powerful protectors against aging and disease. They're energy promoters, weight shedders, mental clarity powerhouses, beauty makers. You definitely wanna know what all the hype is about. For many years, I have been fascinated with antioxidants. We, meaning people, science, has discovered hundreds and thousands of nature's best, from fish to fruits to vegetables and plants that produce a flower or a seed or a root or a leaf that seems perfectly designed just to heal or protect our bodies. Many people do not know that the antithesis sort of the opposite to antioxidants are high glycemic foods. These foods are responsible for free radicals and free radicals damage and age the body. I first came to learn about and memorize the glycemic and antioxidant scales when I was in my mid twenties. I was living in New York City. I spent a lot of time in the bookstore, Barnes and Nobles in Union Square. And it was there that I came across the book, The Pericone Prescription by Dr. Nicholas Paracone, and that book changed my life. I read that book so many times sitting on the train in New York or just sitting on the floor in Barnes and Nobles because it became my guide. And at the time I was already very interested in holistic health methods and healthy eating. And I was getting into the Mediterranean cuisine and raw vegan cuisine at this time, but coming to understand that every single ingestible food and drink can be broken down and categorized with a number on a scale that basically lets you know how much damage it'll do to your body, well, that really appealed to my common sense linear mind and it made choosing foods far easier. So this is the glycemic index. And in the description, there's a link for a glycemic index that you can download, print, keep on your phone, and just have it with you when you shop, cook, or eat out. So what is the glycemic index and what does the number mean? Well, I'm gonna break this down in a way that made sense to me after reading the science for years, and I think it'll make sense to you. Our body requires glucose to make energy. Glucose is code for sugar. The glycemic index basically categorizes food and assigns each and every food a number based on how quickly the food turns into sugar and how much sugar it turns into. The foods with high numbers raise the blood sugar the most and the quickest. Low glycemic index foods are 55 or less on the scale. Moderate foods are 56 to 69. High glycemic index foods are 70 or higher. Now keep in mind, we're taking any food item and we're breaking it down to core fundamentals, how it is used for energy by the body. Considering each time that the body breaks down a food, it does put wear and tear on you. So we're looking at how much wear and tear that it puts on the body. According to the Glycemic Index Foundation of the University of Sydney, the glycemic index value of foods is indeed calculated in a food laboratory using scientific methods. And when you understand the glycemic index value of a food, you can make healthier food choices, which of course improves your health long-term overall. So keeping it simple, the high glycemic foods that you wanna avoid, the 70 and above foods, what do these kind of foods look like? Generally, when thinking about high glycemic index foods, think of high starch foods or carbs, rice, white bread, pasta, potatoes, of course, sweets like donuts, cakes, chocolate bars. Processed foods overall are high on the glycemic index. Bagels, 
rice cakes, a lot of cereals, and croissants are highest on the glycemic index. Higher than chocolate bars even. Instant oatmeal is higher than old fashioned oatmeal. Potato chips are higher than potatoes. And cheesecake is lower than cake with chocolate icing. So you're starting to get it about the processed foods being higher. Fruits, which are natural sugars, fall more in the moderate ranges, but of course, not all fruits scale the same. Apples, blueberries, strawberries, bananas, they're all lower than mangoes and pineapples, which are super sweet. So a lot of this is self-explanatory just by tasting the food or even looking at the color. But as a rule, whole foods are better than any processed food. When I'm craving sugar, I always go for natural sugar, also known as rather than a starchy carb or processed sweet like cake. Also, and I say this in all my sugar videos, nuts such as peanuts, which only have a glycemic index number of 14, curb sugar and carb cravings. Throw a few in your mouth and it tricks the brain. So the reason for avoiding high glycemic foods. By avoiding high glycemic foods, you're avoiding a higher blood sugar and also the spike. I talk about the spike in my How I Beat Diabetes video. The spike is code for when you go from a low blood sugar range to suddenly eating something that is very high on the glycemic index and your blood sugar rises quickly. An example would be you wake up in the morning, you start out with a naturally low blood sugar level, and then you eat a processed banana, banana nut muffin and drink a coffee with French vanilla flavored creamer. Your blood sugar spikes quickly. This is what causes the problems. And here's the damage that these high glycemic foods do. I put a ton of sources in the description because there's so much science on this, but I'm going to give you the basics you need to know to avoid the foods you need to avoid and include the food you need to include. High glycemic foods cause inflammation. Inflammation causes free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules that hurt our bodies, cells, and organs. An overload of free radicals over time can cause irreversible damage and lead to disease. Chronic inflammation creates a lot of free radicals that eventually cause more inflammation. So this leads to an ongoing vicious cycle that can damage many systems in the human body and lead to disease and aging. This vicious cycle leads to aging of the face and body, diseases, brain fog, low energy, headaches, organ issues, a lot of skin issues are directly related to inflammation, digestive problems, and so much more. Inflammation is behind it all. Recently, studies are linking restless leg syndrome to inflammation. And it's important to note that high glycemic and processed foods are not the only things responsible for free radicals. The sun, pollution, stress, drinking alcohol, chemicals in your food and around you, smoking, all contribute to creating free radicals. So I wanted to include some new, more recent data that says you also need to consider the glycemic load of a food. The GI index in aiming to stay low to moderate is all I have ever needed to see positive changes. But let's talk about this glycemic load briefly. The glycemic load number takes into account the total number of carbohydrates in a food item when determining the food's effect on blood sugar. So a food may have a high glycemic index number, but a lower glycemic load number because it contains less actual carbs. For example, a watermelon is sweet. It is a 76 on the glycemic index, but because watermelon consists mostly of water, it has few actual carbs. So its glycemic load is only two. I should mention, when curbing sugar cravings, watermelon was a go-to for me, even though it is higher. It is a fruit I recommend as a substitute because it's whole and it's natural sugar. Now in the description, I included a website that also calculates the glycemic load. This way you can make the absolute best choices if you wanna get very specific. 
And just to encourage you in case you're getting a little overwhelmed, the glycemic index and staying to moderate to low was really all I ever needed to achieve balance. Antioxidants. If high glycemic foods are the damaging foods, antioxidants are the protectors. The knights in shining armor who have their own scale. And that scale is called the Oryx scale. Oryx stands for oxygen, radical, absorbance, capacity. And it measures the antioxidant capacity of each food item. The capacity for the food to protect you, your cells, and the vital systems from radical oxidation, which was talked about earlier in free radicals section. The Oryx scale measures in the thousands, going all the way up to 14,000. With this scale, the higher the number, the better the food. Remember, the ORAC value is the antioxidant protecting capacity of the food. But what is an antioxidant? Well, antioxidants neutralize free radicals and therefore they can reduce cell damage. And this is why I call them nature's protectors. And on a related side note about nature's protectors, when you go through the list of millions of edible plants and seeds, leaves, flowers, roots that they produce, it seems that nature has designed a planet full of natural protectors and healers for us. Go-to cola helps with scarring. Chicory root helps with digestion and stomach lining. Valerian root helps with anxiety. Kava promotes well-being. Evening primrose helps with fertility, PMS, and promotes anti-aging. Bilberry helps with eye health. I could go on and on. So when you get away from thinking the only way to deal with ailments is with medications and you start to get into holistic health and healing, you see all the things nature has provided to deal with just about everything we encounter and everything we put in and on our bodies. So back to antioxidants, the ORAC scale, right? So it tells us which foods are essentially most potent in protecting us. It really does become a numbers game. And conversely, to high glycemic foods, higher on the scale is better. In addition to the ORAC scale, there's a great list in the description. And it basically lists all of the protective antioxidants that are out there and which foods contain them. Some examples, according to the USDA, include fruits like blueberries, cherries, pomegranate, grapes, apples, prunes, avocado, herbs like turmeric, cinnamon, oregano, thyme, Red cabbage, beets, bell peppers, leafy greens like kale, squash, and sweet potatoes, all healthy high antioxidant foods. Then you have the powerful antioxidant extra virgin olive oil and sprouts and beans and nuts like almonds, which contain vitamin E. Choosing high antioxidant food is like choosing from all the colors of the rainbow. And raw whole foods are best. Recently, I learned that dried fruits have a higher antioxidant content than fresh. So investing in a dehydrator is a great idea. But of course, buying dried fruit with a ton of sugar added to them is counterproductive. So the only way to really benefit from this little side note of drying your fruit, making it higher antioxidant is to just throw some fruit in the dehydrator. Superfoods. Superfoods are basically the foods highest on the Oryx scale. And these foods also usually are packed with other nutritional healing and protection capabilities, like being high in vitamins, minerals, fibers, flavonoids, which is a fancy word for anti-inflammatory protectors. A good example is kale, one of the most nutrient dense foods in the world, salmon, is an anti-aging and mental clarity powerhouse, garlic, lentils, kefir, barley, seaweed, acai berry has shown to aid in weight loss, pomegranate, goji berry, chia seeds are amazing for the brain. Quinoa and avocado promotes healthy skin, all superfoods. It is no surprise that eating these foods in their raw whole form gives you mental clarity and energy supports weight loss, and over time, helps slow down and even reverse aging and prevent disease. There is a separate list of amazing superfoods in the description also. So let's look at how the studies are discussing the glycemic index, glycemic diet, and longevity. A study conducted at the University of Deakin 
concluded that in an aged population of mice, a low glycemic index diet extended the average lifespan by 12%. In a study looking at centurions, which are people that are older than 100, longevity was actually improved by maintaining a blood glucose level that is average and keeping blood glucose fluctuations in a normal range. That basically means avoiding the spike. One study conducted at the US Agricultural Research Center looked at how carbohydrate quality and quantity affected cell homeostasis. And cell homeostasis basically is just discussing how the integrity or the stability of the cell is, how it's able to grow, function, metabolize, and survive. It's a very delicate, intricate system to maintain this cell homeostasis. And this study found that persons consuming high glycemic index diets saw higher damage in the cells an interruption to cell homeostasis. homeostasis. The health and longevity of the cells is the health and longevity of the human. And if you look at my sources in the description, there's a lot more on this, as all of this is behind the science of senolytics and life extension. So you have the glycemic index, you have the auric value scale, and you have a list of superfoods, along with that great list of antioxidants and all of the foods that contain those particular antioxidants. You wanna slow aging, you wanna look amazing, you wanna feel amazing, you wanna shed weight. How do you put these things to work? Create a balance in your life. Aim to stay in the low range on the glycemic index, which is below 55, or in the moderate range, which is below 69. Eat as high as you can on the auric value scale. So in other words, eat as many high antioxidant and superfoods as possible when you are eating, shopping, cooking, ordering, and planning meals. An example of balancing and substituting looks like this. You're out to eat and you want some pasta. That is high on the glycemic index. So as a side, avoid the potato, also high on the glycemic index, and instead go for something lower, like a veggie side. You wanna eat some dessert? Well, skip a ton of white bread before dinner because both the dessert and the white bread would be high on the glycemic index scale. Eat superfoods depending on how you want to feel. Acai berry and goji berry give a lot of energy and a really light feeling. Avocados fill you up while enhancing your brain and skin with the healthiest of fats. Wild Alaskan sockeye salmon naturally provides a feeling of well-being. And if you're very ambitious, I'm going to tell you the four no-nonsense direct ways to get the most positive effect from this lifestyle. One, go as low as you can on the glycemic index scale. Two, eat as high as you can on the ORAC scale. Three, eat as many superfoods as you can. And four, eat your foods whole and raw. That will take you to the next level and it'll take you there quickly. Yet any positive changes, replacing your processed muffin and coffee in the morning with strawberries, yogurt, and green tea will make a huge difference. There's no specific way to guide you because your mind works on a reward system most days. So the more you follow this way of eating, the more that just feeling and looking great will motivate you to make this a lifestyle. It does not have to be a super intense process. Again, just try to eat the foods at the GI level of 55 or below, which is low, or 69 and below, which is moderate. Add in as many high antioxidant and superfoods as you can. And even though you're not gonna get it right all the time, remember it's a numbers game. Use that logic to achieve balance and make this your way of life. I promise you, you will love the way you look and feel. If you liked this video, consider subscribing or hitting the like button. I really appreciate you and we'll see you in the next video. To your health.